Welcome, everybody. I'm Kyle Hine, and I'll be hosting the Players Podcast, a GTM family production in partnership with the EuroLeague Players Association. I will be having in-depth conversations with current and former EuroLeague players about important topics that many athletes face on and off the basketball court. Stay tuned for more episodes. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Players Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, one of the up-and-coming stars of EuroLeague basketball, current Olympiacos Pareos basketball player, my guy Shaq McKenzie. Shaq, what's up, man? How's everything? Everything is good, man. Thanks for having me. It's a real honor, for sure. I appreciate it, man. Now, you know, I shouldn't even be talking to you, man, because you know that, you know I mean? You you put me on a poster. <laughs> <laughs> like, you could just lay it up and tap the backboard, man. You had, you had to put me on a poster, man. It was on ESPN. It was on, it was on everything. I, I, honestly, I wasn't that bad until the next morning I woke up and I watched SportsCenter. It was like number two and number three. I'm like, <laughs> like Jesus Christ. But Bro, uh, <laughs> you don't you don't understand the emotions that was going because you know I realized I dunked it and then I landed and I seen it was you and I was like <laughs> oh my god and I was telling my agent like of all the dunks that, of mine that makes four center it's this one that's probably like a five or a six you know for career dunks for me but <laughs> no nah, man I officially apologize man <laughs> nah man it's cool but it's all love man because if I'd have blocked it I'd have felt the same way so man I, I thought I, I thought I could get it too I was like ah. It's like, man, maybe, yeah, maybe, dude. maybe four or five years ago, maybe, but that's what you told me during the game. You was yeah. like, you know, well, you know, back in the day, that was punched. I'm like, <laughs> no, nah, like, nah, yeah, man. Now get into that. You just kind of spoke about it, you know. So, what, what was the most memorable dunk of your career? You've had so many, and I mean, the early part of your early <sighs> career, you've had a lot of highlights. So, you know, what's what to you has been your most memorable dunk? Um. I, man, it, it was a few, like at every level, like I had one in junior college. Um, I had a, you know, I had one in uh, South Korea my first year out. Once I left Italy, I actually had one in Italy. Uh, my favorite probably though was the South Korean one. But if you put them all like uh, up against each other, because yeah. um, I was actually creating something like that at top like 50 of my dunks but then uh-huh. I didn't have the time for it but they are somewhere bolted and maybe one day I can get to it that'd be dope, um, but bro. that'd be dope it's about seven or eight that are about equal to me in my eyes yeah man I'm sure you're gonna have a whole whole lot more though I mean the way the yeah. way you going man um my yeah. favorite that I seen was uh you didn't dunk on anybody but it was more like a statement dunk the one versus Panthenikos uh last year mm, yeah um yeah, it was just yeah. like it, it was just a statement like the way you just took off and the power I was like yo this is <laughs> I was like you let you let everybody know that you here <laughs> bro I was waiting man long time for the Euro League shine and um every time when I think about like I just go back to Russia, like after I left Grand Canaria and that, mm-hmm. and those emotions and those feelings that I was going through, um, it was really one of the worst years of my life just mm-hmm. in general. And it was just like, man, I'm probably never gonna make it to that big stage. So once uh, once, uh, once Olympiacos took that risk or took that chance on me, I was like, nah. And I still got a lot of work to do, but, mm-hmm. but like you said, like that was a statement. Now, what, uh, at what age did you first get your, did you start dunking? And do you remember your first dunk? Yeah, the, the first time I ever attempted to dunk, I actually did dunk. It was my freshman year. You know, uh-huh. in, middle, in middle school, I was always just playing around, like, you know, slapping glass, but I never attempted to dunk. Mm-hmm. But everybody knew, like, you know, Shaq has bounce. Why does he never <laughs> try to dunk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I, and then I actually moved cross country from Indiana to Seattle. And I'm at a new school. I'm in the hood. You know, I we don't live in the hood. I live like on Lake Washington, which is mm-hmm. one of the richer parts of the Seattle area. I'm living there with my family, but I was on a waiting list to get into Franklin. You know, Peyton Siva also went to uh, mm-hmm. Franklin. And shout um, <laughs> yeah, shout out to Pepe. And when I'm on uh, the waiting list, I'm I'm got to go to Cleveland, so I got to bus it on the seven across Seattle to go to West Seattle, bro. And that just opened up my eyes. I went from Indiana, you know, church boy, um, you know, raised in the church, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the Wednesday choir rehearsal, Tuesday <laughs> church, Sunday church, both services. Um, and then to to walk into that first year where it was like gun threats and mm-hmm. just gangs and just I'm getting initiated, not initiated like into a gang, but just into that lifestyle. Yeah. It was like, 
I'm the only I'm the only kid in the school wearing polos past year, <laughs> uh, fast forward, you know, five or six years later, yeah. everybody got everybody. onto the polo yeah. trip, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, that was those were weird times, but it, it really gave me that that dynamic to be able to adapt to any situation, um, which also helps with the overseas life. Every country I go to, I embrace the culture 100 percent. Definitely, man. Definitely. Talk And then talk a little about um, Seattle basketball. Um, Cause I mean, the mm-hmm. roots are, are strong there, man. You guys got a lot of hoopers, um, you know, a lot of, you know, great stars. You, you, like you said, you mm-hmm. mentioned Peyton, um, but just talk about like, just kind of coming up there and coming up in Seattle and it's like, you know, the basketball there and what's it like? Uh, man, you got to understand, like, I was always like kind of timid or shy. Like I kind of always stood away, like not to mm-hmm. say, not to say I didn't like want to be a part of the crowd, but I was just kind of always my own person. So mm-hmm. I never kind of like, they had friends of hoops, Rotary. Those were the big AU teams. I went with a smaller team hype and mm-hmm. I averaged like 35 over the summer and I played against those big teams and I was killing. Um, and and I, I didn't live, um, I moved from inner Seattle to the outskirts mm-hmm. to Kent, Washington. So I have my own crowd that I, that I roll with, but you know, I would always play with, I looked up to Jamal Cropper for, yeah. you know, my teen years. Like that was my guy. And still to this day, you know, I reach out to him. Um, but no, he, he was a pivotal part to, I feel like me getting to where I am for other reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but he kind of lit a fire underneath me for sure. That's dope. And how, how do you, how bad do you think Seattle needs an NBA team? Oh man, I was there when it, you know, those, those last years with KD, man. Yeah. I think now they'll respect it a lot more than mm-hmm. what it was before they left. Because before they left, bro, it was empty seats. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't how they trying to portray it. But then once, you know, once it's going, it's like, hold up now. You miss if it. they get one back, <laughs> it will be one of the main locations into the end of the NBA for sure. They're not going to get that back up. Definitely, definitely. Now, you you just recently signed a, a contract extension with Olympiaco. So congrats to that. Um, you know, talk about, you know, the, the reason why you decided to, you know, uh, you know, sign the extension and, you know, what and what does that mean to you? Um, you know, as we spoke a little bit about before, I mean, there's, you know, how this game is, especially in Europe, you know, a lot of times players don't get the opportunity to, you know, sign or be with a team, you know, after maybe one or two years. And it's very rare that a player finds a home. So, you know, talk about that, you know, how you've, you know, basically, you know, found a found a home and then. Also the hashtags, the hashtags. I seen that, you know, the fans had kind of had a campaign to kind of keep you around. Um, so, you yeah, know, yeah, talk yeah. about that feeling as well. I mean, for me, I feel like it would have been an injustice for <clears throat> the explosive player that I am to come to a place like Olympiacos and not mm-hmm. give the fans their just due. Um, you know, in recent years, I don't think, you know, they've had a player with such explosion or the, the EuroLeague really, you know, you got, you um, mm-hmm. You got Williams, you know, it's a few players, of course, but it's just like I'm here in Olympiacos. This was my first chance. It feels like home. And uh, this is just, it's just kind of where you, I want to be. It's like one of those experiences. Like, I don't know what any other EuroLeague team, I don't know what it's like yeah. to play for them. And I'm perfectly fine and, you know, fit with this situation. It's like, I don't, I don't, I don't really care to, um, to find out about another team right now, per se. And hopefully at the end of this two years, you know, I can re-up again, you know, it's wishful thinking, but it's like, why not? Um, and the re- Renew McKissick hashtag, man, that was just something, bro. I just came home from from work, from practice, and was like, what's well, good? Why am I getting all these notifications? <laughs> why are you trending? And, and, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was like, uh, this is this is leverage, you know? And I, and I actually was trending at like number two, and then I went mm-hmm. to three and then back to two. And I'm like, this is weird. Um, but it was just it was just leverage for me. And I think I just had to use that little piece. Like, I hate to say it, but I was like, thank you, guys. You know, I hope it happens just because, you know, sometimes you got to fight for what you want. Exactly. Now, you, you spoke about it, like we said, with the with the Renew McKenzie. You know, let's talk about the fans. You know, obviously, you know, during this pandemic, you know, we couldn't have the fans be at the arenas. And we all know how passionate, you know, the Gate 7 fans are there at Olympiacos. Mm-hmm. So, you know, talk about how they have embraced you, you know, during your time there, um, you know, over over the year and a half that you've been there. Um, I know they can't, you know, be in the stadium. So they hit me up a lot on social media, on mm-hmm. IG. And I and I take the time out to reply to about probably 90%, whether mm-hmm. it's good, semi-good, frustrated. I'll be like, man, I get it. Like, me just replying to them is probably the highlight of their day. So I Definitely. do go out of my way to, you know, like everything. If they ask a question, I'll reply. Um, just to have that accessibility because I know they can't come to the stadium. Mm-hmm. And also... Um, 
it also it what a lot of people don't realize is if you if you get a force behind you especially like the fans you know it, it it's better than not having it. And I'll, yeah. and I'll just leave, and I'll just leave it at that. So, <laughs> you know, I could, and, and for what I do off the court, you know, as far as branding myself, it's like that accessibility, people, people want to feel a part of something. And I do too, yeah. you know, that's just human nature. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so shout out to the fans at Olympiaco, shout out K7, man. Um, hopefully next year, things will be a lot different. What do you think it's going to be like that first game when, uh, when fans are able to be back oh, and, my. You know, Gate Seven is rocking. Like, you know, how's that going to feel? Oh man, man, I I I feel bad for the first team that comes in. You know, not even winner. <laughs> I hope, winner I hope lose, it's not us, but... man. I hope it's not us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, winner lose. I'm just like that type of atmosphere is crazy in it, and it's unfortunate because the guys, you know, the Americans that came this year, they don't get to experience that. Right. But I was thrown into that. You know, I kind of had a buffer with Maccabi. You know, their their stadium there is a little bit lit too. Yeah. And that was at the beginning of COVID. So they had like 75% capacity, but it was still turned up in there. And then the next game was Pana. And then the game after Pana was F is sold out. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. So I, I got a season to catch my breath, but I know what I'm getting back into um, as well. Now you play with two, you know, legendary, you know, figures on your Olympiacos team, um, you know, Yurgos, Brendan Zies, and, you know, what everybody calls the, you know, the European GOAT, you know, Billy mm -hmm. uh, Vasilis Spanoulis. So what is it like to, you know, to play with, you know, such legendary figures and, you know, what, you know, what have you learned from them during your time? Um, Cause I mean, I know I learned so much. I was, I was right around your age when I came there um, and, you know, learning every day from Billy to see his work ethic, you know, even, you know, even still now I would imagine, you know, I thought, you know, when he was, you know, the top player in Europe and I'm still, still would imagine that his, his work ethics the same. And even with your girls, like, you know, so what talk about, you know, being teammates with them and also just learning from them every day. I mean, uh, first things first, it's like, like the power of the mind is really like crazy because you I got to take it back to when I was literally at Arizona State mm -hmm. and I'm playing with these guys like on a video game like on 2k this is real <laughs> you know true story I was a 2k head so I was so good in 2k when I would play random people I'd be like yeah. okay I'm gonna grab a EuroLeague team <laughs> so then I'm going through the EuroLeague rosters literally I know you was probably on the team too I'm going through the yeah. EuroLeague rosters and I'm like all right, let's see who rated the highest. I think they had them like a 91 overall, mm -hmm. you know, EuroLeague rates. And um, they just had Billy, bro, and he did not miss. Yeah. And I'm like, who is this guy? So I Googled it. I'm like, Spanulis. So I knew about Spanulis, you know, a long time. Really? Um, and that was my first introduction to EuroLeague, actually, mm -hmm. because, you know, at ASU, I'm thinking NBA, NBA, NBA. I'm not going overseas, whatever. Um, and then, you know, so to fast forward these years later, even though he wasn't a part of the Pan of Victory last year, I just knew how much it meant. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, to once uh, he finally came back this year, like you said, the work ethic, the no days off, the, the taking care of his body, like it really is admirable. It's like, man, you still this late in your career still and you still on. treat it, you mm -hmm. know, you still treat it like, you know, like you want to play forever. Um, and also, you know, even during the practices, I learned, I learned so much probably things I can't, you know, repeat on air, but it's like, he, he, you know, he's on people. He's yeah. like, no, you know, we do things a certain way. We do things this way. Um, so I think just learning how to be a leader from from Billy um, or from, you know, Spanulis is one of the biggest thing I learned from him. Your ghost is just like, bro, it, to me, like the way that he is like just offensively, mm -hmm. <laughs> like he's really just an assassin to me. It's like poetry and motion, like, and I, and I, not, you know, no knock to his D or anything like that. It's just his offense it's for him to be doing this at such a high level and to be a part of the 3000 point club. Like it, man, I, it makes me go home and I, and I text my brothers last night. I said, yo, if you, if you let up on me this summer, like I'm going to be extremely angry because I mm -hmm. want to win a EuroLeague title just because I see like how you get treated, like the reverence that they have for you if yeah. you do win one. Yeah. I mean, I mean, those guys are, are incredible. I mean, like Billy, to, like you said, to see him come in, you know, even on his off days and still shooting and even, you know, mm -hmm. in the weight room. And, you know, he has, you know, he has five, five, six kids at home, but he's still in the gym, still working, still doing everything. I mean, it's 
it's incredible. I mean, he's probably one of my biggest role models. And like I said, him and your goals, I mean, I've been trying to, to been practicing this push shot for the last like six, seven yeah, yeah, years, yeah. every day, trying to, <laughs> trying to get, I'm like, yo, if I get this down one day, it's going to help me stay. I mean, give me an extra year or two, but um, I mean, yeah, those are my guys, yeah, man. man. Those are my guys. So shout out to them, man. Shout out to them. Definitely. It's it. No, for real, for real. Now, your league put out this, uh, I don't know if you see it, they really put out this, recently put out this open, this uh, table talk, um, mm -hmm. you know, life overseas. Um, and mm -hmm. like you talked a little bit about before that you've experienced, you've been to, you know, Korea, you've been to Turkey, Italy, Russia, Spain, and now in Greece. Um, you know, so, and one of the biggest things was like, you know, how foreign players, you know, as you, you know, as American, um, what are some of the positives and what are some of the, you know, most difficult moments that you have, you know, living overseas and playing overseas, you know, during all your career? Um, man, to be honest, it's, it's, it's probably 90% positive for me, probably yeah. even higher because Same with me. for me, it's all, you know, it's all a mental game. Like I completely submerge myself into the atmosphere. Like I don't really get caught up in what's going back, um, going on in America. Um, and I tell my family this all the time, like I feel more comfortable here than I do in the States right now, Definitely. especially with the height and, you know, everything with the BLM and uh, what's going on there. Um, but, you know, I, my wife is Turkish. So I, mm -hmm. you know, I played in Turkey the most years, three years, um, love the culture um, there. And, you know, I met my wife there and I was like, all right, cool. Um, let's get married. So we did. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's simple. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, for me, for me is, I, I'm trying to think of some negatives. That's why I'm pausing. Um, I mean, I guess just the language barrier, I, yeah. I guess, because um, for me, the food is amazing. Um, and, you know, I've lived in a, the States my entire life, you know, so to even have the opportunity to come overseas and to go to so many different countries over the last seven years is, you know, it, it's really wild because I'd be like telling my brother, yo, you got to come here. And the first time he came to Istanbul, he was blown away because it's nothing like what, you know, America portrays Definitely. it to be. Definitely. Um, in the same, the same thing, when I first went to Moscow, I was like, wow, this, this, you know, this looks like a, you know, a nice place to be, you know, I, it's cold. I tell people that all the time. I'm like, in Moscow, like, cause I mean, growing up for us, it's like, you know, Russia is always in the natural, you know, natural, point, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and everything, mm -hmm. we've, everything we've done. And I'm like, when I got to Moscow, I was like, man, this city is just like a hidden gem. Like, ain't nobody talks yeah, about this. Yeah. It's so beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I feel the same way, you know, with Istanbul and, you know, Athens mm -hmm. is, is Athens. So everybody's, ha you know, oh, you in Athens. I'm like, yeah, Athens <laughs> is amazing. I'm not gonna lie. But, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of amazing places in Europe. Um, do I get homesick? I think the main thing, the 10% the bad part would be missing out when my mom has, you know, going through breast cancer, and I'm over here, or yeah. my little brother being diagnosed with schizophrenia, or my you know, sister with lupus or my big brother having a brain tumor, like in always literally being over here every time, um, you know, something big like that comes up. Um, so it's kind of like walking on eggshells, you know, waiting for a phone call, you know, like, ah, I just hope everything is cool. Cause I know I'm over here, but um, yeah. So I think, I think the family and the health, I mean, that, that poses a big, a big problem in my eyes. And the only reason I could see myself saying, okay, I'm ready to be done. Is there something about your league competition that surprised you? Um, you know, when you first started, um, you know, looking back on it now, um, you know, like I said, you've had success, success, you know, up to this point. But is there something about the game that you know that you that you enjoy um, about your league? Yeah, man. I mean, apart from it being the highest level in Europe and kind of just having that respect, um, once you get actually inside the league, you just you just see how smart players are and, um, and how smart coaches are. Um, you know, players make you pay for everything at this level. Um, I, you know, going into the Epis game uh, previously, but Boa is just one of those players for me. He's always been one of my favorite players, and I think he knows that, but he's one of those players if you try to cheat him, he will make you pay every Burns single every time. time. And that's what I respect. Yeah. You know, that's what I respect. And I'm like, man, I hope in two or three years I'm like that. <laughs> so, I mean, um, you can you you can learn a lot from, you know, a, a, a bunch of different players in EuroLeague. Now, my, uh, my last basketball question, and you kind of mentioned it a little bit, but I want to go even further. You said two, three years. Um, you know, looking at your career now, and let's just say, you know, five, seven years from now, and you're talking to your future self, you know, 
where would you like to be? And, you, know, you know, what are what are your long term goals in this in this game, this this game of basketball? Um, man, I want a Euro League title more than anything. Like, I, it really, it really <laughs> chews at me like every single day. Like, it's just one of those things where it's the only thing I think about because I'm like, okay, I'm here. I've gotten here. I've proven that I belong here, but. I still have doubters. So mm -hmm. to take it to that next level, it's like, I have to get a title. I don't even care if I'm the main person we get, I can average two that season, yeah. but just to have that title, you know, attached to my name, like, like you have, like, you know, your Euro league royalty. I'm like, man, Appreciate just want to get me that. I hope, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I don't need two or three. I just need to win one. And, uh, you know, so I think for five years from now, it's like, just to make it to the final four, you know, yeah. um, and, and, and have a chance for it is, is good enough for me. Um, I just want the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the way your career is going and the way you're playing, I definitely think that you're going to get there. Um, I mean, like, hopefully Thank it's not you. against Thank us. You. And hopefully, I mean, I, I'm long yeah. going by then. <laughs> but, man, I definitely, like I said, man, you're the way, like, you're definitely one of my favorite players to watch and definitely one of the players I respect the most, you know, up-and-coming players that I feel like is, has a, a definitely a bright future in this, in, uh, in this year league game. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It means now a lot we, coming from you. Oh, man. Uh, anytime, anytime. Now I want to get into, you know, what you're doing off the court, um, which I think is, you know, equally as important. Um, you know, so talk a lot um, about, you know, the things that you're doing. And specifically, let's start with the Player's Choice Show. Um, you know, talk about mm -hmm. the origin and talk about the beginnings of that and talk about how, you know, how all that kind of started. Oh man, it's a long story <laughs> of how Players Choice started and it's kind of deep rooted into just mm -hmm. the way I was raised. Like my mom being a single parent, we were always us four at the crib, you know, she's going to work at six, coming home at six. So basically my older sister had a huge part in raising me, but everything was kind of DIY, do it yourself. Mm -hmm. No matter if something broke, you kind of had to take it apart and figure it out and, you know, uh, see how to put it back together. Um, so that's kind of, you know, people ask me, you know, a player's choice, like, how did you build that program? How did yeah. you figure out all those things out? And I'm like, a lot of hours on YouTube, <laughs> you know, a lot of, a lot of failures, a lot of, you know, this doesn't work. So I got to try this, this doesn't work. So I got to try that. Um, my favorite thing to do is literally to fail because I know every time I fail, there's an answer somewhere out there. That's a gem um, right there. You know, so that that's what it was with 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 building players choice like people don't see and I sent the um because you know I've been working on it for a while like I always had ever since I was in Spain I was like I want to create a show. Mm -hmm. um, so I sent the guys in players choice now what it looked like two years ago I just sent them a screenshot and it's like night and day, night and day. I'm using the same program all <laughs> the knowledge was there but it was just the learning process. Um, and, you know, in probably three, four years, it's going to look completely different than what it is now. But that's the beauty of it. Um, the journey is by far the best part of everything that I'm doing, because uh, I know once I accomplish it, mm -hmm. it's like, all right, what's next? Now, how involved are you? I mean, you talked about it a little bit now, but how involved are you are in the process? Like, are you actually, you know, are you editing everything? Like, you know, mm -hmm. talk about like the behind the scenes work about, you know, what actually goes through to you actually to produce an actual episode. Uh, man, so for Players' Choice now, and I kind of brag or pat myself on the back because I can literally now just wake up on Sundays and put it all together if I wanted to, even though uh -huh. I don't do that process. But two months ago, it was literally the show ends. That night, I'm already looking for topics <laughs> to put on the next show, looking uh -huh. for, you know, edits. I got to crop pictures. I got to come up with uh, nifty titles. I got to think about new segments to make the show interesting because it's on Twitch. So we get to interact with um, all of our fans. So it's like, it's one thing to pre-record, but it's another thing to actually be doing it live and kind of can't miss. And that's, a, that's a totally <laughs> different, like different talent, like totally different. It, it, in, in the first month, it was trash. Second month, it was trash. But I feel like now we're finally getting our feet under us to figuring out, okay, we got to just be a little bit more prepared. We got to take notes during the week and study a little bit more. Um, so when it's our time, you know, we know what we're talking about. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I got to edit everything. I actually went on Instagram a few times and mm -hmm. I was like, yo, does anybody know how to use Adobe After Effects uh, or Premiere Pro or Photoshop? 
because I know how to use it. I just need a little minion um, to come up <laughs> under me yeah, and yeah. just be like, you know, okay, what do you need me to do? And thank God I found that guy. His name is George, uh, George Crisp. Um, he's my, he, he helps me a ton in uh in create in developing the show because i can just send him the topics he boop 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 edits the videos send them back to me i plug them into the program uh which we use as obs uh, which stands for open broadcast system mm -hmm. um that's what every twitch user um uses and the reason i got so familiar with obs is because um i put my wife i was like hey you want when we first met you want to stream and she said yes so she i had to learn the program for her we had to learn it together um, and she's now partnered on Twitch. She's doing her thing on there. Um, so she streams every day. So uh, it's like usually. A, it's a family business. Yeah, but it's like it constantly got me online. Like now I need a new laptop because she's always on the PC or she's like, <laughs> now nah, he's streaming now. So now I need a new laptop. So that, this summer, I'm pretty sure we're going to get an amazing laptop. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be like Christmas. Now you talked about it, and, and for those that haven't seen the show, it's a live interactive show. Um, it, it, it's on every Sunday, um, six six p.m. Mm -hmm. um, but why did you choose to do a live interactive show versus pre-recorded um, podcasts or pre-recorded, you know, live, you know, on YouTube or something like that? And then talk mm -hmm. about Twitch for people that aren't familiar with Twitch and why you chose, you know, to have, you know, to have it on there. Uh, man, I'm always trying to push the envelope, like every time, like it started off like, like, okay, I'll, I'll first answer. The reason I chose live is just because everybody else is doing pre-recorded and yeah. it's extremely difficult yeah. to find what we're doing this um, regularly. Like, you know, it's four guys that are on key every, you know, every Sunday, we're not, we're not missing any Sundays, you know, we're bringing it. Um, we have sponsors, Slam Dunk, shout out Slam Dunk, uh, mm -hmm. Cosmo Sports. They're the number one sports retailer in Greece. So they're coming in, they're doing giveaways um, to drive attention to the show. Um, so the partnership with them is amazing. Um, I chose Twitch just because I feel like for me, it's like Bitcoin. Like people didn't mm -hmm. understand Bitcoin. And I, I remember right. the first time I heard about Bitcoin, you know, six years ago, I was nervous. But then by the time COVID hit and the price of Bitcoin went down to 4,000, I said, I know the moment to get in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And it's the same thing with Twitch. Like I sat there and I'm just like, no, oh, it's something here. And a lot of people, like when I presented to them, they don't understand it. Um, you know, just because if you don't, if people don't realize it, but IG Live is the next one out of here because it's a way to interact, but it's not enough. Like, yeah. Me doing a raffle or a shoe giveaway on IG Live versus me doing it on a, you know, NBA niche basketball show on Twitch where I get to interact and I get to say my opinions live in the chat and the panelists are going to actually read some of my comments off or talk to me. You can't beat that interaction. Um, and that's what people don't, you know, they fail to realize. So I think um, I give it one or two years in the next one or two years, Twitch is really going to catch on in a different way. And it may look different or somebody's going to try to steal the idea um, and implement it onto their service. But it, live streaming is for sure the next, the next wave in my yeah, opinion. I, mean, I think Twitch is, 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 I mean, it started off almost as like a niche kind of streaming, like, you mm -hmm. know, with video mm -hmm. games and stuff like that. And, I, yeah, and amongst yeah. the video game community, it's, it's huge. It's, it's huge. Yeah, but I yeah. think like you said, yeah. now with live streaming, everything, you know, especially now with COVID, you know, with everybody being in the house and people looking for mm -hmm. content, looking for stuff, looking for live streaming. Like I, I, I believe you, you know, 100%. I feel like, you know, Twitch um, is definitely the, the new wave. Now talk about, you know, yeah. some of your, your favorite segments and favorite topics on the show. Um, you know, for people that don't know, the show is with you um, and three other of your, of your friends. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then basically, I mean, the way, the way it's kind of, you know, I shouldn't say scripted, but the way it's kind of programmed is like, you guys are basically just talking about popular topics and popular things that are going on in sports, um, and also in culture too. Um, but yeah, talk about, you know, what, what has been your favorite show, um, you know, as you've done so far and what about your favorite topics and segments, segments? Um, the last episode, which is on Valentine's day, I think is the favorite up to date, mm -hmm. just because you got to understand over three months. It's we've had um, we have different segments. We have beat the Dale. Mm -hmm. um, where, that's my um, that's low key my favorite because Dell. I mean, you know, Sean <laughs> and Dell, my guy. So I just love you. Dell. Got I you. love Dell's like New York opinion. You know, New Yorkers are like they they they're so opinionated about everything. So I just love 
I just love that. Man. Uh, <laughs> no, for real. Um, I play with Dale and Gazi and Tep. So yeah. what I picked up from him is he's very articulate. He Facts. reads something and he doesn't forget it. And yeah. I was like, okay, what can what can be a good segment for Dale? And it just so happened that over the summer during quarantine, it's this show called The Beast or something like that. And it's mm-hmm. like it's set up in a way where it's a guy, his IQ is like 130 or whatever mm-hmm. it is. And he just knows things and they just ask some questions and they have to try to beat him and answer more questions. So I was like, okay, how can we make this interesting? Dale, we ask some questions. He goes against the chat. The winner, you know, gets points. Um, so <laughs> it just worked out perfectly. And Dale's like, I love it. So um, <laughs> that was his, that's an amazing segment. We asked him five questions about whatever. Um, and then uh, the next one will have to be the J Awards. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where um, we ask, we give Jay, who is the host of the show, he gets to ask us anything. The best invention from 1990 to 2000, the greatest movie of all time, the best sports movie. Um, bro, he can ask us anything. And then me, Dale, and Jordan, we all have to answer. And then mm-hmm. he chooses the winner. And on okay. the screen, you can see we all have trophies. Yeah, so the trophies, just, yeah. yeah. You know, when you win, it just appears out of nowhere, fades in a little OBS trick. Um, but the crowd or the crowd, the chat gets in into it, man. It's for sure the the fan favorite, uh, the J Awards. Um, and then we got, you know, we got a bunch of segments that we're trying out. You know, you would never see the five or six or seven that were completely just like, nah, we're never yeah. doing that again. And it, and it was quite a few of those. But uh, we're trying we're trying out new stuff literally every show. Well, the one I thought was uh, really dope was the Who Wore It Better with the Mike Beasley joke. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. the- <laughs> I see it on Instagram, then I went back and I watched the episode and I was rolling yeah. on that one. <laughs> that one, man, that no. one was that one was hilarious, man. No, man, the, the vulnerability, I think, um, is what makes the show so good because being being wrong pre-recorded versus being wrong live or being clowned pre-recorded and be like don't put that in versus yeah. it just popping up and you not yeah. having a choice it hits different so i'm glad that i have the guys um that i have been it, it's amazing how i picked those three guys and it just works effortlessly yeah i mean it because to have four to four people you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. you said especially mm-hmm. live and like the like the one thing i noticed the most was like the dynamic that you guys have like it's natural it's mm-hmm. organic mm-hmm. and i mean that's what i like I, I think i what i enjoyed about the show the most like you know just seeing you mm-hmm. guys kind of flow and how you flow and like i said it's organic there's nothing for it. so i mean i think that's the kind of yeah. the coolest part yeah no that was that was a big part of everything and just to put man just the mindset like it's just so crazy to me that like and I and I know you'll get into this later, but I just look around and I'm like, okay, how can I be different? Who's doing mm-hmm. what? Um, how are people operating? And that's when I seen you. Um, actually, Charles Jenkins put me onto your podcast, or not your podcast, but your day in the life in Russia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I watched that and I was like, wow, like there is. Granted, this is Euroleague royalty that's getting away with this. Essentially, you know, Appreciate my it. thinking, like you know, <laughs> um, but I'm like, you know, if he can do it, then maybe I can swing it. So then I started, you know, getting my feet wet, like, okay, what, how, how are people going to, you know, take to this? And you have the flip side of maybe certain teammates or certain players being like, who does this guy think he is? What is or even in the organization, like, oh, he should focus on basketball. But that's just not how life is set up. Like, you'll drive yourself crazy, you know, every day just thinking about, oh, we lost this game or, oh, this didn't work out for me. Oh, oh, no, it, it's good to have different outlets. I mean, and we can get into it now. Like, I think, you know, one of the things and main reason why I decided to start putting out content was because um, every time I came home, people always asked me, you know, about what's overseas life like? You know, what do you guys do over there? And I was like, you know, rather than, you know, than continuously tell people, I was like, you know, I wanted to give the opportunity to show them. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, it, it it's almost taboo um you know like you know over here it's like we have to be focused only on basketball they're like you know mm-hmm. it's just basketball if you have your focus on anything else a lot of times the teams or your agents or the media holds it against you and i mm-hmm. wanted to show people that you know we're people just like them you know basketball is what we do but it's not essentially you know who we are so you know we we enjoy we have other things we like things and you know and i also just wanted to show the other side of basketball you know a lot of times like we talked about before you know, there's 
ninety percent of you know majority of players they love playing overseas. You know, we get treated, mm-hmm. we get you know mm-hmm. uh, experiences and different things. And a lot of times, I think, especially back in the states, you don't hear about those stories. You hear about the stories yeah, that yeah. the negatives to you know, people not yeah, getting this yeah. and that and the other. Exactly. So it was exactly. like I wanted to have the opportunity to show that. So you know, talk talk about you know your decision. You talked about it a little bit before, but talk about your decision. You know, when you decided to you know say, listen, like I'm just gonna you know I'm, I'm gonna put this content out. You know, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you know, talk about like you just basically pressing the button and deciding to really do it. Um, man, it's the same thing I tell anybody that's struggling with hoop or just struggling to follow their dreams. Like once once you don't care that this may end in me living in my mother's home on her couch again, mm-hmm. <laughs> once you just be like, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Bro, everything really just changes in your life and it just transforms. Once you get that mindset of like, well, if it, I could go back tomorrow and I'm and I'm gonna start something and it's gonna pop again, it's gonna be lit, it's gonna be that, and that's just my mindset. I'm like, okay, what's the worst that can happen? Mm-hmm. They can tell me to, you know, to stop doing it. Um, legally, I don't know if they can. I don't know if that's a, you know a part of the contract, but I mm-hmm. think you know, I'm like, I think I'm good on. I've covered that base. So for me, it's just like, why not? You know, if nobody else is gonna do it, I can be the first to do it or the second to do it. You know, mm-hmm. um, in your case, and you know, I seen that you already kind of had the quarter with Hines, um, you know, and then you came out with that um, show with uh, where you were doing breakdowns on players. Yeah. yeah. And I was literally during quarantine with my we trainer. We ha- we have one on Nando DiColo, uh-huh. and it's like it was edited. It was ready to go, and I literally I seen that and I was like. Oh no no no! Okay, I'm I, I'm getting warmer. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm getting warmer, but it's not quite. Uh, I'm not quite where I want to be, and I and I thank for all these things. You know, I'm thankful for all these things happening because it lined up players' choice and just my vision of okay, I, I, where I'm at right now is like I want to build a multimedia company. At like, mm-hmm. um, you know, like the Buzz Feeds, the Bar Stools, the those guys. I'm like, how did if they can do it, I for sure can do it. That's just my mindset. And I can do it while I'm playing basketball. And yeah. it's the same way, you know, players can run businesses back in the States, whether it's real estate or, you know, whatever it may be, and also play basketball. It's just the 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 visions are aligned a little bit differently, but it's essentially the same thing. And I also like to think I'm cut from a different cloth, especially with what I'm able to do. And this is not me tooting my own horn, but it's just like, I feel like you got to have that confidence to be like, indeed, nah, I'm, I'm going against the grain. Indeed, indeed. So what... What has the reaction been to to the to the players' choice show and and then also to to the content that you've been putting out? Um, you know, which we'll we'll talk about a little bit a little bit after this. Um, um mm-hmm. that you've been putting out. What has the reaction been to to the fans? Um, you know, mm-hmm. to the to your to your teammates and then to your peers around you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been huge. Um, it, it really it to me. It, I'm I'm actually blown away. Mm-hmm. Just for the number one retailer in Greece to come along and just kind of be like, hey, um, we like what you're doing. Uh, you know, we, we're trying to be a part of it. It really just, it just makes sense, especially to part, partner with them. Um, so for me, it's one of those things where I'm extremely happy about the reception, but I still know that there are people out there like, why won't he just play basketball? Yeah. Their team's losing. Why won't he just focus on, you know, here's another story. They just lost three in a row and he's still doing this show. And for them, you know, <laughs> I wonder what their escape is because, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't say you, you, you should just be focused on this, this or that. Nah, man, this is life. This is real life, you know? Um, so, you know, the reception it, it has been overall good in my opinion. And there's a bunch of things behind the scenes that, you know, we can talk about later. I can't, you know, but um, big things are for sure on the way. Now, you, you spoke about it a little bit before, but, um, you know, I want you to see if you can, what is, what is your overall vision, you know, for the, the player's choice, um, you know, show your, your content. Um, like you said, you want you know, you want to have a multimedia, you know, empire, but, you know, over the next, you know, couple of years, you know, what is your vision and, and where do you see yourself, you know, taking this? Is this, do you, is this when you retire, do you want to be involved solely in media or is this more, like you said, now it's just kind of like an escape for you? Um, you you got to understand if I could run it back, I would never have been on Player's Choice. But the fact yeah. that I don't know anybody else that can do it how I want it done, it, you know, I, I, it's honest, of honestly, life. I'm the same way. Like if for me, yeah. like I really don't like I really don't want to be doing the like podcast or hosting the podcast or hosting that mm-hmm. stuff, and even mm-hmm. like the 
the the first documentary docu series we want to do like I wanted to do somebody else but I was like I guess you know I have to be the one to jump out there and do it and make sure that it's it's, it's just handled the Bro, right way. What? One thousand percent. And I think the biggest thing is for me, people don't want to take that risk. They don't want to. Yeah. People are so afraid to get burned, but about the silliest things for me, getting burned um, for however much money to put into my dream is much different than being burned for something to, like this is something that I'm chasing. So for me, I'm like, I know I'm going to lose money. Yeah. I know I'm going to put money here, here, here. I know I'm going to believe in people. It's not going to work out. I'm going to buy cameras and lenses. It's not going to match. I'm going to buy the wrong lights. I'm going to get a computer and be like, why didn't I get the the one that was a thousand dollars more that would have saved me time. But then mm -hmm. I had to go back and, you know, get it rebuilt, which is all has happened. But it's like I said, it's the journey. It's the process. Um, so for me, that's the funnest part. Um, but uh, to get to get back on track, um, we're, we're, I'm trying to think where I was at before I got it, got into that moment. I was having a blast. I'm like, <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, no, no. Um, I'll just, I'll just follow it up with players or just anybody in general has to um, kind of just take those risks and yeah. put themselves into those situations. Like I said, I didn't want to be on player's choice. Um, if I had it my way, it wouldn't have been like that. But where I see myself is player's choice is already a blockbuster thing in my eyes it'll only get better Never. i i i the channel the twitch channel is called smix 77 and we're ultimately trying to turn it into a hosting channel to where let's say you know your quarter with Hines, we come in there it premieres for every tuesday before mm -hmm. it goes up onto your youtube so it's just regular content like a tv show um we are in talks we have a podcast coming out um we're in talks with other people that are doing unique things like music artists that just come on the channel and stream. They make beats for two hours. Um, we're we're kind of all over the place, but we understand that this is the beginning. So we don't know how it's going to look, but where I see it is for sure. Million dollar buyouts, multi-million dollar buyouts, three, four, five years down the road from just selling off multiple shows that that's just, and I know it's accessible and I know it can happen. Yeah. It just got to be done. Sure. Right. For sure. It's going to be a lot of failing too. For sure. So. Sure. I mean, with everything, like you already said, that's the only way you learn. You have to, you have to first fail. Now, if, yeah, yeah. now if I'm a player um, mm. and, you know, I want to get started, you know, I want to, mm. you know, film some content or I want to put some content out there. Mm -hmm. um, what are you, like you said, you, you've, you've been through it all. You know, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to me, you know, to start um, my content or to start my show or to start something I have particular what advice would you give to me? First off, probably therapy. And that's a serious <laughs> question. <laughs> I mean, that's a serious answer. I'm telling you, like, um, I've had a therapist since college, since Arizona State days. Yeah. So I'm able to talk to her and she's asking me questions like, what are you afraid of? So um, a lot of self-help books, a lot of mm -hmm. self-help apps, a lot of meditation, because you literally have to zone out in not care about the opinions of others. And that's yeah. the hardest thing to do, especially yeah. in this day and age. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. extremely difficult when you, when Twitter, Facebook and IG run the world because you're logging on and you're seeing a lot of fictional things, a lot of fake, you know, BS. Yeah. And then you're like, man, I'm so far behind where actually, no, it just, it just looks different right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, my advice, I mean, that, that would be the first start is just to kind of find who you are and just be comfortable in your own skin. And mm -hmm. that's with any creator. Um, and secondly, it's going to look disgusting the first, however mm -hmm. long, first year, first two years, maybe. Um, you know, you're learning something completely new, so it's not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But if you get a schedule and you just stick to that schedule, okay, every Monday I'm going to record myself. Um, I'm going to get a GoPro and I'm just going to carry it around and I'm just going to film it. Then I'm going to hire an editor off Fiverr mm -hmm. and I'm going to, I'm making all this money. You know, I'm overseas. I'm going to hire this editor off Fiverr and I'm have him edit it for $75 a week. All mm -hmm. my GoPro footage It's so many hacks that I'm learning. Like, boy, I was killing myself trying to do everything myself mm -hmm. trying to edit my audio doing all these things for 15 dollars. i can just have this guy who's a professional on fiber.com do it or mm -hmm. design my logo um you know it's just little things like that but don't be afraid to ask for help you know you got to youtube a lot um but you just got to have the want to do it and i think people know it's on the inside it's that burning feeling like man i can barely sleep because i know how this has to be mm -hmm. um so creators 
are different. They they want to create and they know it. You know, it's not, I don't think creating is one of those things where it's just like, I'm about to do this today and, and you never had a fire for it. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you yeah. know, you know, deep down probably you've been maybe wanting to do this for six, seven years, but now you're finally in the space to where you're up yeah. here and you're doing it with the highest level. You know, you got to pot with um, your league, you know, the quarter behind, and then you got to pot with the player association. So it's like, no, nah, that, that, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to get no, well, you have put me in those same, you know, mm -hmm. meetings. So I'm like, okay, I, all I had to do was just, you know, reach out and just be like, yo, you know, um, so thanks for extending that olive branch. But I, I, I just think people can't be scared, you know, to be themselves because I it'd think, be a travesty to die, you know, I, and, and not be able to accomplish that. Do you think that's the, the reason why a lot of players, um, especially players over here, um, don't put out content, you, don't you, put out <laughs> put out stuff like that, even like, you know, social media and stuff like that? Do you see that? Like, do you think that's the biggest reason why? It's no more uncomfortable feeling than putting a one minute trailer out for your docu series the day Amen. before and then Amen. going into practice the next day because it is eyeballs like you know everybody's seen it you know i mean like what you guys think of it but but i'm now the guy like in the locker room i'm the i'm that guy i'm the twitch guy i'm the mm -hmm. i'm the you know computer guy um but it's just like they're the fashion guys you know mm -hmm. i leave that to them they you know they know how to whip themselves up and you know i take i'll be seeing their outfits and be like oh that's dope you know yeah, i wish yeah. i had the time if i'm putting my money into you know i'm spending 5k on computers and they're spending mm -hmm. 5k at the louis vuitton store it's just it's just you know, you just got to see where you're and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. Like, you know, if you love fashion, you love fashion. I just this is my fashion. I love to dress up my player's choice and make it look good. And, you know, it costs a pretty penny, but it's worth it in the end. I feel the same way that they probably feel when they, you know, put on a new outfit and they go out for the first time. It's the same thing. Now, do you see, um, you know, personally, obviously in the States, you know, player led content, player led creators has been something mm -hmm. that's been, you know, I would say growing over the past five years, you know, with the, you know, mm -hmm. you have LeBron James spearheading it, you know, um, you know, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant, who, you know, had, mm -hmm. who was doing it. And now you see a bunch of different docuseries and different things, you know, mm -hmm. pop up. Do you think, and I think, you know, with the likes of, you know, yourself and, you know, some other people mm -hmm. that are doing some other, you know, creative stuff, um, you know, over here in Europe, but do you ever see it, the wave, you know, catching um, over here, in Europe, like the way it is, as far as like athletes, mm -hmm. you know, driving content mm -hmm. and, you know, athlete led content um, over here in, in Europe? Um, I don't know. Hopefully, you know, you and myself can be pioneers because when I look around, like I see a few guys with some YouTube stuff, but yeah. as far as just, you know, opening up those doors to be like, no, you guys kind of got to respect it and, and, and we can create you know, something beautiful on our own. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, my hands are tied and I got to follow these rules. And, you know, so I think those days are coming. Um, <laughs> I don't know, we may or may not be the martyrs for that. Um, <laughs> I mean, but, somebody, somebody's got to be somebody. <laughs> somebody you know, got to walk on the front lines, man. <laughs> exactly. But I'm pushing the envelope, you know, as hard as it can be. And over these next five years, it's going to be some wild stuff. And people going, it's going to be maybe some controversies. I hope not, but it, I know, I know where I want my content to be and I know what gets eyeballs. So I hope people don't take that as a like, uh, he, you know, he just wants attention. No, I just, I just want a good show and not saying that will ever be the case, but it's just like, I can't do anything that's repetitive or boring on my channel that I don't believe can be big. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, now if it's something else where I'll be like, I believe in a certain person, then okay, that's different. But, you know, I think the envelope you will see pushed at least out of me, like, like never before, for sure, over the next two to three years with the ideas um, that are in my camp. And they, they, those guys are crazy, but, <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, man, you, right, need, why not? You, Let's need, try you need crazy, man. You need crazy <laughs> exactly. in part of your group. That's one thing I learned. <laughs> exactly. Now, you, you spoke about it a little bit just now, but is there like a, is there something in referring to like European basketball or overseas life mm -hmm. that you will want to see, you know, a story or a topic or something that you've mm. seen that you'd be like, yo, like, I want to see this get out there more. Like I want more eyeballs on this. Man, the, the, the problem now is I know multiple cameramen and yeah. crews that could yeah. 
direct the best Netflix series of over uh, or uh, Euroleague basketball in season after season. It's just really the the Euroleague coming together with each mm-hmm. team and being like, hey, um, cameras are going to follow you guys around, but it'll be the number one thing on <laughs> Netflix from Europe because sure. it's so, it, you know, it's just so much that goes into you know, Euroleague that people yeah. don't see, well, that they do see, but they only see it in black and white. Yeah, They don't see it actually playing out in cinematic form across their se- screens. Cause you see all these reality shows like, uh, what is it? Last Chance You. Yeah, um, I was just about to say that. You know, yeah. these type these type shows. And if Euroleague had one, you know, you know, it'd be like, oh, I can't even look away. Yeah, I, w- I was thinking, I was thinking all those lines too. And I, and- I mean, they know this, but I kind of pitched it to your league too about like, you know, doing like a hard knocks, you know, type mm-hmm. of thing, you know, with like, you know, like just mm-hmm. having cameras and having people, you know, follow it. But, you know, I think sometimes, you know, we're still stuck in that kind of old school um, mentality yeah, where it's like, sure. they're like, oh, we don't want to give this secret away. We don't want to have these cameras. And I'm like, man, it'd just, yeah. be, it'd just be dope to kind of be you know, transparent. Transparency, man. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I, think, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, and also seeing with, uh, with the Michael Jordan, um, you know, mm-hmm. docu, just the past mm-hmm. documentary, I think it opened up a lot of people's eyes and you starting to see more documentaries come. I, uh, I was telling Billy, I was like, man, you got to do something. I was like, I know yeah. Billy isn't the most like, you know, out there, but I was like, bro, like, you yeah, gotta, yeah, yeah. you got, somebody's got to tell your story. That would man, be dope. Your, yeah, your story yeah. is, your story is incredible, man. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta push Billy to get to do something, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, for sure. I'll bring it up to him tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, man. We gotta, we gotta push Billy to do something. Now, now, talk about your, uh, you know, obviously we talked about the player's choice, but talk about mm. the your your other content that you're producing um, on your channel. Um, you have, I think, this four episodes um, where you kind of go mm-hmm. behind the scenes, um, you know, of, of your life, you know, as a basketball player in Olympiacos. Um, you talk about, you know, the clothing line that you're trying to build and, you know, all these other different things, that, which I think is super dope that I think a lot of people don't get a chance to see. So, you know, talk about what goes in that and also like why you decided to kind of, you know, you know, do that as well. Uh, man, I just know I got to tackle as many lanes, but once I've finally seen how much go into a clothing line, yeah. it made me take a step back and say, okay, I gotta, I gotta do it differently. I gotta be more methodical, like instead mm-hmm. of just, um, but hooking up with Cosmo sports was the best thing for me because it's like, they're like, Hey, you know, we can have a meeting about some of your designs going up on our website and we ship internationally. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes sense, but that's, that's a little bit down the road. Um, but as far as the docu-series, um, Man, it's just that's just what I always wanted to start with. But then what I realized is, man, you, man, man, uh, man you really got to be on the same page with everything. It's a lot that goes into it. Um, you know, my cameraman wants to get after it more than I do right now because I'm like, yeah. oh man, player's choice is so successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in my eyes, I'm like, I got to put my focus over there. Um, so, you know, it's something that I think when COVID isn't here and we have the opportunity to go out and film a lot more, you know, uh, interesting things like next season, it'll probably be much bigger than or I'll put much more attention into it than I am mm-hmm. now, um, which I'm guilty of. I probably should get back um, into that because the people love it. Um, but I need them to love Players' Choice right now. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, um, <laughs> this is all good. Um but yeah, man, it was a good it was a good stepping stone though um, mm-hmm. to get subscribers on YouTube, get a following there. So when I come out with these other shows, um, and, and it's so much stuff that is in the chamber, um, content for IG, just yeah. you know stories from my childhood, from being homeless to being in jail to being you know sleeping yeah, in cars man, you're, you're, and all of this your, stuff. Your story, your story is incredible, bro. Your story is yeah. your story is real, man. Your story no, is real. No, no. I mean, thank you, but it's just like, people don't know the half of it. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, it's one thing, and I often think back to, you know, it, man, it's just, like you said, it's a lot that goes into it. It's, yeah. it's a different type of edge when people have dreams and nightmares, but the only dreams and nightmares I have is me waking up thinking, God, I, I'm not in handcuffs or, mm-hmm. you know, having that trauma of, you know, so that's just kind of what keeps me driven. Um, but yeah, man, so it's a lot of content revolving my life that will be hitting IG soon. Um, 
I'll be anxious to see what the reception is to that because that's a little bit more in your face. Oh. Um, Twitch is, you got to swipe up to get there. You yeah. don't always got to go by IG. You got to watch whether you like it or not. So um, that's going to be interesting for sure. All right, so I got a few more questions. I'm gonna let you get get going. I know it's your your off day, and I know you want to you know enjoy oh, you your good, time you with, your, with you and your with you and your wife. Um, so if you had, you know, we both do content. We both do you know kind of on these interview, um, you know, kind of type of segments. If you had mm-hmm. one dream guest that you can have on the Players Choice Show, mm-hmm. who would it be? One Ooh, one I... one athletic and one non athletic. Okay, right now, because of where I'm at in the situation I, I'm in and how close I think I am, mm-hmm. I think Giannis, uh, that would be epic oh. to have him on just because, you know, he he he's a goofball too, so he'd yeah. get on there and have a lot of fun. I think um, I think Giannis would do it. I think that, I think that yeah, could yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully so, man. It was it was sure. close to happening, uh, but yeah. it was it was so new. It was at conception, so I was like, man, let me let me yeah. get proof of uh, concept first, uh, and I come back to you. Um, but non athlete, oh man, that I can just interview straight up and not mm-hmm. be on the show. Probably, man. I really like um, Matthew McConaughey. Mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite actors. Mm-hmm. Um, I tap into all of his interviews. Um, it's for me it's just like when he's in character he's in character Mm -hmm. and you know it's it's real respectable for me and and just the way he lives his life um like i said i've I've listened to a few of his podcasts and i I like his content i like his content great great and what so what what are you talked about like you know just the the podcast and you know some of the things Mm -hmm. you listen to what what's some podcast what are some of your favorite podcasts and what are some of the Mm -hmm. the, some of the content that you're that you're listening to that kind of inspires you to you know to to be a creator Got you. Uh, Gary V. That's a huge mm-hmm. one. His rants, his he'll have an old one come out from 09 <laughs> or 2016. I'm like, yeah. I'm watching this or I'm listening yeah. to this for the second time on this flight. It's an hour and a half, but I, I probably missed something. Um, uh, Tim Ferriss, that's mm-hmm. a guy that I look up to, man. The way that he interviews is unbelievable. It's mm-hmm. unreal uh, what he gets out of people. Um, so, um, and that's kind of what we're doing right now, we have a podcast coming out called Only the Hungry. Okay. Um, our first guest was uh, Swish Cultures. Nice, our nice, our nice, second nice. one was uh, Paul Fabritz. Um, he's a mm-hmm. trainer. Mm-hmm. Um, they both have huge followings, but the stuff, like the stories and the insight is crazy. And I'm like, God, I got to get this out to you yeah. guys because it's amazing. Um, but, but yeah, man, so Tim Ferriss, uh, he, he, he wrote the 20 hour work week or the 40 hour work. I think it's the 20 hour work week, mm-hmm. um, which is an amazing book. I read that many, many years ago. I probably should go back and read it. Uh, but there's a, there's this app that I want to put people onto. It's called Headway. It's mm-hmm. $50 a year. But um, it just gives you books in 13, 14, 15 minute spans of all the good stuff. Uh, you may miss out on some stories, but you're going to get a lot more content. Um, so I, I prefer this way of learning uh, because I get to read more, read more. And every day is something new tailored to your um, to your needs. And you can search any book on there and it probably has a 15 minute breakdown uh, narrated and you can read along with this. So Headway, that's an amazing um, tool uh, for entrepreneurs. Okay, now I'll give give the people, um, the other creators, you know, some tips or some tools um, mm-hmm. that you that you use. Um, like I said, you know, for our athlete creators out there that you know want to, mm-hmm. you know, get involved in this, you know, this space. Um, you know, mm-hmm. what are your, you know, what are your preferred tools, or your preferred methods, you know, for some of the things you don't got to give away all the secrets, but you know, uh-huh. what are what are what are some of your preferred, you know, tools of the trade that you're using um, to you know to get to record and, and do the and produce your and edit your shows. Uh, number one is download or pay for first Adobe. Um, mm-hmm. They have a suite, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere, and um, just download these tutorials. That It's a million of them on YouTube. You will learn day by day how to do things that you want to do visually that you thought were impossible that are so accessible that it's not even funny. Um, there's this website called Invato. You want to go there. That's where you download templates. That's how Players' Choice looks the way it does, kind of. Um, I just go there, download the template, tailor it to Players' Choice needs, whether I'm switching up the font, the lettering, what it's saying. Um, So the presentation is amazing for the show. Um, Fiverr.com, F-I-B-E-R-R.com. That's a big one. That's a big Um, one. Yeah. You know, don't, man, don't get caught up in, I can do this myself. Like, I taught myself Adobe, but that this like three, four years of me knowing 
all mm -hmm. of these Adobe programs. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, I got caught up in the loop of, oh, I can probably figure this out. If it's something I know I can't do, I'm going and paying for it every mm -hmm. single time. Um, and know that you're going to spend a, a lot of money for it to look the way that you want it to look the same way businesses have to spend a lot of money for it to, you know, to look the way they want it to look, but the return on investment for sure will work out um, as long as you stick with it. So um, those is kind of everything that I do in a, in an extra and to have a good team around you mm -hmm. get away from friends or teammates that aren't on your save wavelength wavelength off the court. Mm -hmm. um, I love to play 2K, but I had to stop playing 2K a few years ago just because <laughs> Same. I could, you know, I could, you know, I couldn't chase yeah, yeah. my dream. So, you know, um, you know, and guys like to spend money on clothes and fashion. I got my money has to go to other places. So mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing. You really got to eliminate everybody that is not for you in any type of way. Um, it's a difference between associating with your teammates and being cordial and everything is like, you know, oh, this, this, and no, just, bro, I'm to just keep to yourself, get a good team of three or four guys that are on the same path as you, and, it, and it'll work out 1,000%. Now we're going to go back to basketball. Tips to a younger player that wants to have a successful professional career. IQ and skills are everything. You have to study the game. You have to sit there literally, if, even if it's two or three hours a day, I get it, like, <laughs> but if you're younger, you got all the time. I don't care who yeah. you're watching, LeBron, MJ, you know, just go on YouTube and just watch games and just be like, man, what were they thinking when they were doing that? Just because it helps, man, the mindset, like, even when I'm watching players in EuroLeague, just in film sessions, I'd be like, man, they, they, you know, they are really skilled. And um, that's the biggest thing that I, I know I have to learn this summer is just become more skilled, um, develop a higher IQ, man. The athleticism was always there for me. Of course, you got to do like, if you're mm -hmm. a basketball player, you know you got to be in the gym. You mm -hmm. know what you need to work on. But to help you, you, you really got to get your mental right, I think. Agreed, agreed. Last question, um, and this is the question that we asked all our guests. Favorite past and present EuroLeague player? Hmm. Ooh, okay. Favorite past, um, just because this was like, for me, it was my first year playing in Turkey, but uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, when he was mm -hmm. playing for uh, Fenerbahce, mm -hmm. uh, I just always respected his game. And it, like, I'm like, yo, I know he's staying in the league because I played <laughs> against him and I'm like, yeah. you know, um, and also Luca playing against Luca, like that was, yeah, that definitely. was fun playing against him in Spain. I played against him three times and it was always like, wow, this kid has got it. Um, in favorite present player who favorite okay present player would probably be let me let me think i don't want to out man i don't want to say Babois, but i really like Babois, mm -hmm. and, and I've, I've liked him you know i've loved this game for years man um yeah so shout out Babois, i think yeah shout and, out and also guys. Also, um, your man over there that was at Oldie last year, uh, Punter. Yeah, KP. Punter. Yeah. Yeah, 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 KP. KP. Yep, yeah. heard a lot about him. Uh, I'm around a lot of New York guys, so I learned a lot about KP over the last year. Yeah, KP. Uh, you know, KP's in that same that same stratosphere as you, man. He has a, a big up and coming, you know, European. He's a European savage, career, man. Definitely. He's a savage, so I'm pretty sure we have a lot of battles over the years. Definitely, definitely, man. Definitely, yeah. man. Hope y'all be able to be here front row for, for all of them. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Before we get out of here, man, let everybody know um, you know, where where they can find you. Um, you know, shout gotcha. out your your channels and, and, and everything, gotcha. man. Let let people know. Cause I mean, that's the one of the big reasons why I want I wanted to do this, man. I, I feel like, you know, mm -hmm. you like I said, man, you're a pioneer. I love the way that you're you're moving, you know, the culture, moving, you know, everything forward. Um, especially in this content game, like you said, you're not afraid to push the envelope or or take risks or be vulnerable and put yourself out there. And then the, the best thing about it is like the content you're creating is dope. I mean, it'd be different if it wasn't high quality content. So I, I believe that, you know, people need to see what you're doing. People need to hear what you're doing um, because I think people will really, really love it. And I think people will really, really be in tune. So, um, you know, shout out, shout out what you're doing, man. 
Got you. Um, you can find my docu series and reruns of Players Choice on YouTube. Um, I think it's www.youtube.com slash C slash SMIC77, S M C K77. Or you can just YouTube Shaq McKissick, and I'm pretty sure the channel will pop up. Um, on Twitch, it is twitch.tv slash S M C K77. On IG, it's S M C K40. And you can go there and in my bio, click on my link tree and get everything that you need um, and some probably more than what you were expecting. Um, but yeah, man, thank you again. Like the first time that I reached out um, to you, I love what you're doing. I'm curious to see um, what you do next. I'm sure we will probably have some collaborations in the Definitely, future. Bro. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm interested to see us push the envelope. Hopefully we don't become martyrs and we can be trailblazers. Definitely, man. Definitely, man. Like I said, we definitely going to, you know, uh, you know, have some collaborative things and collaborative opportunities, you know, not only amongst ourselves, but hopefully other, you know, bring some other players and you know, along with us mm -hmm. and we can, you know, really expound on this, you know, European overseas basketball thing that we're trying to, you know, trying to trying to make bigger and try to let, let more people see more eyes on, man. But I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you taking the time. Um, and I look forward to, you know, get a chance to talk to you and best of luck on the rest of the season. Um, Thank and we'll, you. we'll be talking to each other soon. Thank <laughs> you.